want to welcome you all in this today's seminar. Brack University Electrical and Electronic Club is the platform of the students, mainly doing majors in Tripoli and ECU. As a part of arranging a series of seminars, this week time and this week we have come up with one of the most trending topics of today's world, that is Network 2020 with 5G, IoT and Cloud. Now, the purpose of today's seminar is to know briefly about 5G, devices, technologies and cellular networks, about Internet of Things that is insured in IoT and cloud services, and how these mysterious things work in a combination. And these mysteries will be resolved by today our speaker, Mr. Shubhajit Chaudhuri. Honorable Sir has completed his Master's of Science in Electrical and Communication Engineering from the University of Windsor, Canada. He also completed his MBA from the University of Texas at Austin, USA. He has specialities in SDN, NFV, NFVI, MANO, MBB, IMS, EPC, Cloud Core, and etc. He has a technical, he served as a technical leader at AT&T Labs and also as a principal member of technical staff domain 2.0 at AT&T Labs. He also served at different organizations like Exiata, Ericsson, and Robert Communications. Now I would like to hand the mic to Sir to to start today's seminar. Thank you, Sir. Thank you, everyone, for giving me the opportunity. Um, it was a pleasure. And today, um, I think it will be more informal. Instead of um, I just talk one way and show you what 5G cloud, I want to be interactive. Right? You ask for questions. We discuss, if it is even if not related, it's okay. If you want to know anything about the US, going to Canada, you know, uh, what you guys are looking for, I'm okay to discuss, you know, life about the US to Canada. So it will be an open discussion, so just feel free to stop me anytime, and I'll be happy to answer any question, right? And let's uh, start with this. Who heard this term? 5G, IoT, and cloud. Who has some idea? Any ideas? Yes. Uh, definitely. Yeah, you can share actually. So if people open up. Uh, hmm? It's your time. So. Okay. <laughs> so we heard about uh, each G, right? 1G, 2G, 3G. So in Bangladesh, it's now 3G. Very soon it will be 4G. But in US and all over the world, they're looking for 5G. Right? And there's a race for 5G. And usually the 5G timeline was 2020. That they think that it will change the world the way the communication happening. So I will share some of the cases since I used to work for AT&T Labs and now I joined Huawei. They're one of the biggest uh, uh, company for communication and leading the 5G research. So I'll share some of the standard what's happening and it will open you up, especially in third year, fourth year students, that what you are looking for, what is actually communication engineering, right? So let me share my experience. Like, when I was working here in Roby after graduating from West, I thought communication engineering means <coughs> command. You know? It's like you log into a switch and router, you configure that, and that's engineering, right? But when I went to master's, right, it's all about mathematics, right? The first day I was discussing with Prithi, the first class, it was all about stat, and the teacher was discussing a vector, three-dimensional vector, and you take integration and how the mobile communication happened here, uh, and you know, thousand by thousand matrix, how to solve that. I said, I thought it was all coding and you know, it's fun, like you know, what we used to do, but it's not. More deeply you go to wireless communication, more deeply you go to the end, right? So if you are really thinking to do something research or really good life-changing thing in wireless, you have to practice math, math, math. Especially in Bangladesh, we are very weak. Right? We know how to solve big, big maths, right? But we don't know why we are solving them. So that's what I face the problem with. So try to understand why you are solving a math and how it is related to any technique, right? So that's one of my life experience. And then another experience is as a student, we always think that I have to go to this university, that university, right? And a lot of time we don't even get admission. We end up not going. But my uh, suggestion is to apply any university. Right? Just go there. And if you're good, you can come where you want to go. Right? So don't 
stop yourself not pursuing what you want to do. Just try, try, try. That's another thing. And let's start now. Um, so we will see what is that means and what 5G will give us. Right? So some of the items maybe you saw in, in you know, they call virtual reality or augmented reality or in sci-fi movie, but that's happening actually now, right now. So a little brief about myself, I used to work with in E Roku, and I also did an MBA. So part of doing that also, I used to be, I wanted to be a very good engineer. Right? But in the end, I saw you need to know why you are making that product. Will it be, you can sell it? Can you do business, right? So it don't make sense only to do work and you don't know what you're making, right? So another part I will share is business mindset is also very important, which is very much lacking from our Bangladesh students because we want to be a good engineer. But if you see the Indian people, if you see Chinese, they not only become good engineer, they become entrepreneurs, like they start startups, right? If you go California, Silicon Valley, a lot of people where Bangladeshi are trying to join Google, Intel, right? And a lot of Indians actually dropping the job after two years, after five years, because they want to start a business. So for us, because nobody told us that business is good. For us, business is fraud, business is making money, business you are not a student, right? But actually it's not like that. If you're a good student, you will be very good in business. Right? That should be your attitude, right? You should know how to make a product, you should know how to utilize it, how to market it. Right? So my suggestion also, if you want to pursue good study, don't stop your dream just to be a good engineer and have a job in Intel or something. You won't have to start a new company. Right? You have to start your dream there. Right? That, that's another my take. I, I always wanted to share. So here, so who can tell me who is the biggest competitor for telecom in the next five years, 10 years? Any idea? Competitor of who? who telecom company like uh, Roby or Grameen Phone or at and Who can eat their lunch? Who can destroy the company? Google? Yes. Is it Google? Google, Facebook, Amazon. Exactly. And this was, uh, they actually started realizing in 2014 Right? And if you think in US, nobody do a voice call. Everybody either do Facebook Messenger or WeChat or this or that, right? That means telecom companies are not getting any money. They are just getting money for data, right? So if they don't transform themselves, they are dying, right? You see more job cuts in telecom more and more, and Google, Facebook, Amazon is earning more and more money. And who is generating content for them? You are generating. You are taking a selfie, and Google is earning money. Facebook is earning money. Right? So the business is changing. And the biggest threats are Google, Amazon, and Facebook. And slowly they started coming in the networking side. They are started coming, taking over telecom. Maybe in future, there will be nothing called call, voice call, right? Everybody will use the, some data service and making some video call or something else. That's coming. So another observation here, if you are electrical engineer, if you're a computer engineer, if you're a networking guy, whoever you are, you have to learn some coding. You have to learn how to understand language, right? Without that, there is no survival. Even in telecom, everything will be automated. Everything has to be done the way Google Amazon is doing, right? Or else no survival, right? So another suggestion, if you, I'm take, giving too many suggestions, by the way, but this is my observations, talking a lot of people, that if you don't know how to code, any type of code, Python, C, whatever you like, just learn it, one language. It will open you up a lot of opportunities, right? That's another suggestion. So let's see what's happening. So traditionally, we have voice and message that we are very used to, right? But now, in the new side, we are seeing digital services. Like we are using SMS, uh, voicemail. We are using a lot of other services like we are doing Facebook Messenger, right? And we are doing a gaming, we are doing media like YouTube, right? And who is supporting that? This is the, supported by these guys. Same thing in cloud, right? What is cloud? 
So this is there is no cloud because every cloud has a server, right? So what it means that you don't own anything. When you take a picture in iPhone, it's your picture. But if you have a Facebook ID, you actually up upload to Facebook. That means you're uploading to a cloud. And then any country you go, you download that from the cloud. That means you are not dependent on your device. You are dependent on cloud. And this is only one example. But in future, everything will be on the cloud. All kind of services will reside there. You will just consume it from your device, either from your phone or from your TV, from your laptop. There will be no software running inside your laptop, maybe just OS. So that means the world is changing very, very different and very fast, especially this time when you will be graduating. Right? And then another is called Internet of Things. What is Internet of Things? Internet of Things means everything in the world will be connected. And I mean everything who has some idea. What can be connected? Any idea? Stand. Okay, so I think he has some idea. Your clothes, your watch, right? Everything, even your cow will have a chip, right? Everything has to be connected. And it will be billions and billions of devices connected. Your chip will be so much cheap, it will be less than one dollar, right? I'll show some of the cases that we are studying and we are working for products. So you'll get some idea how the world will be changing very soon, right? So let's see, and those, everything is called Internet of Everything. So before, you have Internet of Laptop, Internet in Mobile. Now you have to think about Internet. Especially first thing will come in the car. Who can tell me what's the advantage of having Internet in the car? Anybody? GPS Perfect. Street view. Street view, yes. Very, very good idea. But that's the very basic idea, right? Because you can have it in the phone that will go in your car dashboard. You can have a map. But that's one of the 10 ideas, right? Second idea is if you have internet, you can have automated cars. You give the destination, car will drive itself. Next idea is if your car, the way you drive, generating a lot of information, how many times you brake? Right? How fast do you go? That information is very important for your insurance company. Right? So you can sell that data to insurance company. Right? The Toyota company is very interested in how their car parts are failing. Right? What car parts is failing too much? Is there any R&D needed to fix that? I can sell that data to Toyota. Right? Then I can sell the fleet management company how my car can be optimized. Right? What roads are jammed and how can read out different cars. Right? So there, are, I am not sharing all, but this is the idea. The future generation is for idea, imagination. You cannot just think one service one. You have to think about how many ways you can make money, right? And that will open up new innovation, right? And that's the way, actually, now the world is driving everything, right? One thing will open up a lot of different business opportunities, right? In this country, I know they now started tracking. You can stop the car, right? Only one of the applications out of 10 or 15 applications, right? So that's called Internet of Things. So in 5G, so it's supposed to launch in uh, 2020, but AT&T and Verizon in the US, the biggest two operators, they actually push the standard to 2018. And even if they push in 2017, in December, they call new radio, right? So this new radio, will have a lot of speed, a lot of speed. Who can imagine how much speed will be in 5G, the minimum? Just imagine. 50 eh? Mbps? Gigabit. Gigabit range? Closer, yes, closer. Tera is not still now, but they're thinking the minimum speed in every mobile will be 10 gigabit per second. And it is tested actually 70 gigabit, gigabit in one mobile per second. Whereas in Dhaka, I'm getting maybe 2 Mbps, right? 2 megabit per second. So 100, 200 times more speed. We'll see very soon, next year. And even in, when you will have 4G in this same country, you'll see 50 Mbps, 70 Mbps, right? Next year, you'll see it, like your mobile will be, and most of the 
iPhones and new mobiles already have for you, right? So you'll see that beneficial, right? But as a student, what you should think? You should not think I should buy the next big iPhone, right? There's no point in it. You should think what service I can do, what app I can build, a small app that change somebody's life, you know, especially in this country. So to make an app, maybe you need to do a small coding. It's not very hard. You can go YouTube and learn how to do coding, right? So you study, do everything, but do this kind of thing. That's why in US, everybody is so successful because they always do this kind of thing, right? They try to innovate. You got to see what's there, right? So these are some of the use cases. So 5G will be driven by these three principles. They call enhanced mobile broadband, right? And this broadband minimum has to be 10 gigabit per second. And they call massive machine type. And massive machine type means each kilometer can have millions of devices, right? Now we have in each kilometer maybe thousand maximum, thousand phones. But when you have everything connected, including this microphone and flower, right? So you need the millions of connectivity. So traditional way of networking will not work. Right? And the last thing is ultra reliable. Because when your car will drive itself, it needs a reliable connection. Right? If you have a call drop, your car will hit somebody. Right? But that's not true. Because Google already have a self-driving car. You know that, right? And it runs without a network even. It don't need network. Because it has a lot of sensors. right? So it can sense, it can decide itself when to break and all those. But if you add this ultra reliable network, which is 10 gigabit per second speed, your car has a lot and lot, lot more efficiency, right? And think about a business case here. Your car, when you're driving very efficiently, your city lights are also getting all the information. All the cars in Dhaka, how it is running, right? They are synchronizing their lights based on the information. So it's not only one case that you have a good self-driving car. Your traffic jam will be all synchronized, like you know, because everybody knows everybody's data. And then you cannot do even an accident because your car will break itself. So Volvo, a car company in US, they says in 2020, there'll be no accidents for Volvo. Even if you want, car will stop itself, right? It will be intelligent, right? So those kind of exciting things you have to keep in mind when you study because your subject can take you to do that kind of work, right? So, the, here are some of the use cases, right? So, anybody heard of AR and VR? Right? Augmented reality and virtual reality. What does it mean? It means not only gaming, but a surgeon can wear a sunglass, right? And it can he can see a patient, like, you know, thousands of mile, miles away and do the operation. Because he can see here, he's here. And a robot is doing operation thousands of miles far away. So that's also will be done in 5G because you have connectivity. You don't have any latency. 4G is going to do those because you are very slow. Right? If you do an operation here, maybe it will not do there that way. Right? So these are the driving forces the engineers are working to design 5G. Right? That you cannot compromise them. You have to have augmented reality. You have to have, have you heard of 4K, right? 4K television. Now they're talking about 8K television, right? And for 8K, you need at least 5 gigabit in your mobile phone. Right? So things will be changed, we'll see, so, right? So that's the idea of 5G and that you'll see commercially launched in 2020, maybe in Bangladesh 22, 23, but eventually it will come. So here is one of the use case, uh, augmented reality. You can see that you have cloud-based rendering, right? You want to buy something, and so you want this glass, and you can see, you can have the experience of maybe driving a car or you know going somewhere, but for that, you need very, very much less latency, you know? and you need very much speed. So this is one of the use cases for 5G. And connected car, like I said, all over the world already cars are connected in US, UK, Korea, right? They started long before in 2015, right? So 
some of the country already have a savings, you know. You can see this economy, how it's connected with 5G, you are saving oil because you, your car is much more efficient now, right? And you are saving a lot of people, you are saving a lot of economic value, right? So simple connectivity can change people to drive, right? So those who want to be a mobile engineer, wireless engineer, right? Software engineers, right? Your work can actually change people's lives, right? And that should be the motivation that you go to study. Not for only to like get degree and all that. So here is another case. So in 5G, uh, like you know, before only like what we talked about before, we have cellular connection in car, very very old technology. Right? Then we have started in 4.5G. We have safety that you cannot do accident if you break yourself, but. In 5G, it's beyond 2020, like around 2030. They are saying that your car will just come to you. you know? Where you want to go, you tell him, you take it, right? And then it will park itself. So whoever not learning driving, they are okay. You, know? you don't have to drive after 2030. That's the plan. Right? <laughs> this is another use case. Uh, this is in uh, Germany. And by the way, these are not simulations. These are actual use case uh, from uh, our company. And we're working with different operators in different countries, right? So this is a use case, uh, industrial automation in Germany, Deutsche Telekom. So how actually you can have into a network and this automation is possible because you have so much less latency. You know? With 5G, any questions so far? Okay. So let's look a uh, little bit about IoT, right? What does IoT mean? So I said industry, Internet of Things. But look at here. So this is a very, very big company in the world who do estimation of market, right? And Internet of Things has a market of $6.2 trillion. Maybe it's bigger than economy of hundreds of countries. That means this business will be the biggest business in the world, whatever you do, right? But who has the pie? So if you have the tree of Internet of Things, smart city will be a big pie. Who can tell me a case, what is a smart city means? Anybody? Just imagine, just think something. You don't have to worry, right or wrong. Any idea, a smart city? Everything means a Wi Fi. Everything means smart board, power system, everything is smart communication, smart lifestyle, as I told you, this kind. Yeah, yeah, very good, exactly. So that means this is mainly driven by the government. Like in Dhaka, maybe all street light, all parking, everything is connected, right? So that means your car already knows where the free parking is. You, know? you don't have to know where your street light, if it is goes down, it sends a SMS to the guy who has to fix it automatically, right? And the way the chip are developed, right? Intel, Qualcomm, they're developing the chips, is getting less and less and less value. So one day they're saying the Wi-Fi enabled chip will be less than one dollar. That means less than eighty taka. That means you can wear a chip, right? It's eighty taka, it's not a big deal. And that will talk to your Wi-Fi or LTE, right? The way market is going. So, one of the big project, you know, you'll be laughing. They started in Germany called a smart trash. You know, in trash bins, they put a chip. And every time it's filled up, the car comes and takes it. I thought, what is the big deal, right? But the way they are doing it, before every day the car has to come. Now only two or three times a week, the car is coming. And they are saving billions of dollars because of that. Because Lot of houses, right? You have to think about the economics. A small change, right? Yeah, whatever price is, if, uh, if you are moving somewhere and someone cracking, it's always cracking. Yes. That's, that's actually hampering your price. It's all right. <laughs> so, what about this? What uh, you guys are thinking about? That's a, that's a very good question, actually. That's like a US based question, you know. So, privacy is the major concern, right? In 5G. 
but like as a law, no company can track you. Your location data is yours. You should always know it. Wherever you go in the world, your location data, your consuming data is yours. So when you sign up for Google, Google actually sign you up and it says, you give all your data to me and you're okay. You don't even need you should okay. Yeah. So that means you're already giving your data out. So this way every company is getting, but if you say no, then they cannot get your data. Yeah. So the way it will work, okay, trace me, but give me a lot of free services. Or don't trace me, I'll buy some of the services. Right? So privacy will be a deal like a, in future. If you want, really, really want to be private, you spend money for, like a Gmail, right? Why Gmail is free? Do you think Google is the best free company, best company? That's my idea was before. Google is the best company. Give everybody everything free. But nothing is free, right? You will see, you browse something, next time you open your Gmail, you see the ad in the site, right? Says Google is tracking your email even, right? You say, I'm going to New York. And they say, so cheap deals for New York, right? So everybody's tracking, right? And then you already signed up, take my data and sell, sell it to somebody else, right? So privacy will be a major concern, but I think it will be based on the user, if they want to sign up or not. If you want free, yeah, you have to give up privacy, right? And especially in Switzerland, in my project, they say privacy is the main concern. We don't care about speed, we don't care about anything. But as a Swiss, my privacy rights, is the most important thing. So if you don't design a service that I can be private, I don't care. So that's a very good question. Thank you. Any other? Okay, let's go to the next one. This one, I think the biggest impact will be in Bangladesh, right? And I don't know, I think it's already started. All the all the electric meter already connected to electricity, right? It only needs a Wi-Fi chip or a SIM that sends the meter reading to the station. So you don't need anybody to come read your meter and do a fraud, right? It's automatically done. And these things are solved 20 years back in the US. For some reason, we are not doing it here. But as an engineer here, you guys should make your own electric meter and go to the government, take our meter. It's automatic. It's cheaper than anything, right? Those kind of things you should start thinking. How to change. How to solve a problem. Don't think about very, very big problems. Think about a small problem we are facing every day, and maybe there is no product, try to solve it. Make a third year, fourth year project to solve that. You know? That way, our country will be different. You know? And that's why they are different. Because they don't compromise, they always try to solve it. Okay. Next one is a smartphone. You already know, like my phone in US, I can change the temperature. I can turn off the AC, I can open the door, right? So that means it's connected to internet. And now I'm Google, using a Google app, so I can turn off the light, open up a door for anybody, right? So in future, everything like that will be connected, right? Any concern? Again, security, right? If somebody hacked your Wi-Fi, that's a big problem. So if somebody is interested to do a study in security, he has unlimited job guarantees. Right? That's a very good track to be in. Information security. Because this is happening, but you have to secure it. Right? Next thing is healthcare. First case in healthcare is that in AT&T, they make in 2015 a small box that you are sending the box to your mom, and your mom lives a hundred miles far. You don't meet with her or talk to her. But if she has a medicine, you get a text. If she don't, she forgets she's old, then you get a text that she didn't take the medicine. Everybody is buying that. Right? If million people buy, it's a million dollars. Right? Think about how a small problem can be solved and people's lives can be better and also making money. Right? So these will be IoT, right? Very, very interesting subject. Next one is a day called transportation that I already shared, like connected car, right? Then, and then automated. And last one is a environment. So environment is very important because you see the pollution, right? So the future, you can put up cheap in every city corner, in every, you know, lakes, and it will give you what is the temperature, what is the oxygen level, these and that. And those things are very, very cheap, two to five dollars, right? So government can put it and you can build the app 
and then sell different services to different people. Right? So those way the life will be changed. You know? So they say in US, whatever internet changed people's life, internet of things change much, much, much more. That will be much bigger impact. So we, we just have to see it. Make sense? So let's see uh, what different companies uh, that I work with doing. And since I'm not from the academy, I'll give them real world example, right? So these are the companies like, you know, Vodafone in, uh, in UK, they're the biggest operator, China Mobile, Orange is the France Telecom, right? And then obviously AT&T in UK. So they are all working on utility, smart home, vehicle, health, industry, smart cities, right? They almost all have products in each thing, right? So in Bangladesh, when 4G comes, anybody can start a business, it should, you know, make a small app with a small device, right? That should come up. And you see the use cases, the parking meter, energy meter, tracking, street light, agriculture, homes, cars, Fleet management, elevator, right? Everything you can improve efficiency when you connect it, right? Make sense? So these are some of the examples. So you love some of the use cases, like I said, German is much trash bin. But when you say billions of dollars, that's not a laughing material, you know? Small ideas, right? And then in Beijing, I don't know if you guys, anybody visited China? So in China, there are thousands and thousands of bikes. And in, in bikes, it's very difficult to track and all those. So what they did, they put a chip, right? And in your phone, you have WeChat, right? And WeChat, I don't know if you heard of WeChat. It's like Facebook for China. Right? And in WeChat, you can have a payment system, right? So you just take the phone and your the bike is unlocked. It doesn't matter where the bike is. You drive wherever you want to go, you throw the bike in the street side, the bike will tell the company to pick it up, right? So you pay for only where you use it, right? So now people have mobility, like they just take up any bike, like that's from the company, they pay it and very, very cheap, you know? And then they drive like 10, 15 kilometer and then and, and leave it there. Maybe somebody will pick up, right? It's very, very big business. It's called smart bike. It's possible because it's connected. Then uh, uh, there is a Dubai. Dubai is one of the city that they are pushing a smart city very, very big way. And you can actually go internet, YouTube, or anything, search for IoT cases. You'll see those examples right now happening. But I don't see, unfortunately, in our country any of the IoT cases yet. But I think with 4G license, it will come. So uh, this is uh, one of the idea for home automation. And these are the products uh, we already using in US and other countries. <coughs> and you can see, um, this is one of the protocol, I don't know if you heard that, called Zigbee. It's inside the home. And you can actually change your light, you can change thermostat, you can see your water purifier, your bulb, your soil level, your smartwatch, your ring, your lock, everything from your app. That means uh, if you come here and it's hot, do I lock my door? You can check it and lock it and unlock it. Right? So this will come in our country, it have to come. Right? And you guys are the one who will bring those kind of technology here. Right? So let's look at the another uh, use case. Uh, this is security, same thing. So you can have video, you can have sensor, like if it is flooding, you can have temperature sensor, smoke sensor, gas sensor. So think about safety for garment industry. Always a lot of people die, right, because of smoke. But if you have a sensor in every employee and track where they're going when there's a there's a um, accident, you can save lives, right? This is energy uh, management. So I'm not going too much in details, but you can imagine, right? There are thousands and thousands <laughs> of cases, but I'm showing how actually, this is implemented last two, three years, a lot of countries, right? Efficient energy. This is a home entertainment, right? So if you have a video call or if you have a call coming, if you're watching TV, you can see the call and you can have a video chat from your TV. 
This is very, very popular in US. So you don't have to go take your call. You can set up so your call can be coming in. Most of the TV has camera now. So you can start uh, talking on <coughs> Skype or DJ or whatever, Facebook from your TV. So very, very convenient. And uh, this is a uh, family care. This is one of the use case I told about medicine. But especially elderly people, like you can send him like a pulse meter or Fitbit or you know weight monitor, heartbeat monitor, and wherever you are, you can see how your mom or dad doing. You know at home, you can tell them like you know you should eat your medicine and things like that. So this is the IoT, right? And I'm saying the parking solution. Like, we don't know how many parking left. Like in Bangladesh, we don't have a concept for parking left. In every street we park, and in, in, in outside world, everybody has a designated parking, and you have to park and walk. So you can see, if you have an IoT enabled platform, your car knows where the parking is, so you don't have to drive around. It will take you there. Now let's look how this works, right? We are engineers, so we want to know a little bit more. Not only the use case, how it is working. Very, very simple. Look, in the home, you are buying the smart devices, right? You can buy a lamp, you can buy a plug, freeze, anything smart. And then, inside the home, you have internet gateway, right? An internet gateway, and in the industry, they you can, should have inter internet gateway for the industry, right? And Grameen phone or all the operators should have a platform that they didn't launch yet, but it come, they will have an IoT platform to host your devices. And in your phone, you'll have an app, right? So what you can do, you can buy the device, either you can go through your home internet, or you can come through Amazon Cloud or Google Cloud, right? If you buy anything from Google, it will automatically go to internet and connect, right? If you have a Wi-Fi. And then from your app, you can actually see it. So this is called ecosystem, right? So in IoT, this device manufacturer can earn money, this connectivity company can earn money, this app company can earn money, right? These are all different businesses, right? So as a solution guy, as a programmer, as an engineer, we just we always should think about how we can make people's life easy. That will give you a new business idea. That's, that's, our, that's the way we should think from now. Make sense? So, last topic, uh, we'll talk about cloud, right? We all heard about cloud, 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 a lot of times, right? So, let me hear what's your idea about cloud. I don't know. When I was third year student, I didn't know anything outside my course. So, let me hear what you guys know about cloud. Tell me who is the biggest cloud company? So anybody else? Who says Amazon? Yeah, 10 points. Amazon owns 40% of the world's cloud, right? And they were a book company. And the guy, he thought he has excess capacity. So he started selling the cloud to other people. And now it becomes the biggest cloud company in the world. And in US, Amazon is much, much bigger company than Google. We heard about Google, but Amazon is going faster than any other company, right? Because of cloud and the expertise they build, right? Google is number three. Number two is Microsoft, right? Microsoft Azure Cloud. But what is cloud? Let, let's look. So when you actually search something, right? So all the, all the results inside Google Data Center, right? And that's distributed in the world. Right? So that means you are going to cloud and asking for something. Right? So this is one of the examples. When you do a live chat, you are going an app inside the cloud. Right? Same thing, when you buy something from Amazon, you are using a cloud. So we all are connected to cloud, we don't know. We thought, oh, it's something with technology, I don't know. But we are using it every day. Facebook is a cloud because it's hosted in a cloud data center. And then same thing, healthcare. So everything we are using cloud every moment that we don't know, right? But what is it? Let's look a little more, right? So traditionally, uh, we 
we know servers, right? We know because in future everything will be virtualized, right? And everything will be software defined. So, have you heard the term software is eating everything? Have you heard anybody? So that's the thing. Everything is software defined. So let me give you, give you an example. This is a data center. We have servers. This is another data center, servers. In the middle, we used to have routers, right? We do routing between these. All people do like Cisco, CCNA certified, this, that, routing, all the engineers, right? Now they're saying this is very, very inefficient. All day, all night, you're running this data center and you are using only peak hour, right? Why don't we define it by software? When you use it, the route will be defined. When we don't use it, it will be deleted, right? Dynamically, right? So that means there will be some automation who will monitor each and create and delete routes based on service. So that's new concept started from Stanford University, right? In 2008, it's not very old, right? And the guy says like, I will create a route based on from my laptop or router, uh, a server, and it will manage all the network. And then it will dynamically change, right? And that concept actually changed the world. So the term, if you heard SDN, right? SDN, it's called Software Defined Networking. That will be changing the world again, like IoT. Right? Another term is called NFV, Network Function Virtualization. What does it mean? That means, your router don't need it. Your server could be a router because software is running on it, right? You get the concept? Think about it, you have a wireless router. It has an antenna and it has a purpose-built uh, electronic board, right? So it's doing the mod modulation and it's sending traffic and this. So all can be done only with the antenna and your laptop because your laptop software can be acted as a router. So if you have a spare laptop, you don't have to buy a router, right? That can act as a router, you just need an antenna and modulator, right? So that's, I'm giving you a very simple example, but that's how the whole telecom is changing, right? And that's how Cisco, Ericsson, everybody is going down and down because there's no more new purpose-built router. You don't need to have a special chip to do packet forwarding for routing, right? Am I too much technical or you guys are getting it? I, I, I cannot gauge actually what you guys know about this, but I'm trying to give you an idea of what's happening in the world and you will see in the next four or five years, this will be the mainstream, right? So when you go for master's or job, you already know hard about those, so you can start looking at those, right? Those are the trends. So that means everything is software defined, right? And what is driving it? So another term, who have heard about big data? So big data, what is big data? Anybody know? It's a large number of data. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's true, but what is the difference between large number of data and big data? Big data means uh, like all the uh, certificates of like all the universities of Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. I collect all the certificates of all the schools mm -hmm. when they do the exam. Yes, yeah, very good. Like it's not any specific data, like bank university. It has everything, and the new language, new software, like new tools, can pinpoint each of the data, right? And what is the importance of big data? If you have Bragg University data, you only know it, but if you know all information of all university, and not only the results, you know each student profile, their home address, what they like, what kind of food, and all those, right? Everything, what's their phone number, you know? That means you have a profile of a very, very big, and in big data, you can correlate. Okay, the people studying back in our city like Pisa. I just made it up, you know. But some kind of correlation you can do because you have the data, right? Before, you cannot make sense of it because all are a small database, right? In future, there will be no small database because everything will be going to one big data store. And that's why Google is so important. That's why Amazon is so rich. Because they can correlate data and they can actually suggest you a lot of things, right? That's another trend. Like I said, wireless means mathematics. Big data means 
suggestions. You have to know our language, you have to know C++, but more and more you are good in that, you will be a good big data, data scientist. And in US, if you call yourself data scientist, five companies will come to you for a job. US, because they don't find it. Nobody, nobody knows what actually you need to know. Right? But there are a lot of online courses. You can just go free and learn those things by yourself as a part time. It's not harder than your courses that you're learning in the you know, like a hobby, just learn something, big data analytics, right? So these will change the world in future, especially in the medical field, right? Like a doctor, a good doctor. Why he's a good doctor? Because he can correlate a lot of your symptoms and then give you a suggestion. But nobody can correlate more than Google AI or Amazon AI or, or an AI built by for the doctor. Because he will have all the symptoms, your past history, your mother's history, you know, in the country's history. So he will correlate and pinpoint a thing for you. Even the doctor cannot even. Right? So that's very, very big trend in, in, in foreign countries. Hmm? IoT, I talked about 4G. Once it's launched, you'll see you cannot stop watching YouTube in your mobile phone. You know, I don't know how much you watch, but 4G is all about video. 40 to 60 percent of the traffic in the world is now video traffic. Nobody do voice call anymore. Right? So that's another trend. So all those trends with this software defined network, you can imagine now how the technology is changing, right? It's so different from traditional telecom. It's so different from your landline, right? But so it's, it's the concept is completely different. And how to be successful? You need to know math, you need to know a stat, you need to know a little bit programming. And if you want to be a good psychic guy, if you want to be a good uh, uh, like cheap guy, that's okay. But you need to know all those things too to have a relevant job. So traditionally, we used to build purpose built hardware. So this is an example, you can say like a gravity for network. We have different network elements so that you can make a call, right? Do you know how many network elements when you say hello to another guy? How many boxes it goes? Any idea? Who think they know? This is just a guess. Like in Grammy, you call your friend and say hello. How many devices the call has to go so that the other guy can say hello? I'm just giving you real world priority. Yeah, you can say what's the problem. Yeah. So at least 30 to 40 boxes it goes, right? First, it needs to check your, first, what happens? It needs to check you are a valid user. Then it needs to check your balance. Then it needs to check your location, right? Then it needs to check other guys' location, right? And it's all happening microsecond. You don't even care, right? When the call drops, you say, oh, I call drop. But if you know how the call is going, you say, God, you know, help me. Why this call is happening? Because it's, it's all 20, 30, 40 boxes that everything has to work together. Then when it comes to the base station, before your phone, it's all probability. The way the decoder is designed in your phone and in your base station is based on stochastic probability. That means how the noise in the air, right? What is the pollution level? How much dust? So all probability somebody calculated that and then you hear the hello right so if you if you go trace a call you will know how much mathematics how much coding in each call right and that should excite you to do your study <coughs> so in, in cloud what we're doing we are eliminating each box and we are saying beyond 2020 We'll just put HP Dell servers, very, very cheap servers. We'll put a server, cloud OS, and that software will do everything these guys used to do. That means the engineers developing this chip for Cisco, Ericsson, big, big companies, Nokia, don't have any job because this is all done by software, right? So my point actually telling over and over is that software will eat the world. You know? I'm telling you guys, so whatever you do, electrical, mechanical, civil, learn software. Each, every field has the application, right? And you will see the use of it, right? 
So here, what is happening in the telco side, we are replacing everything with the software, and then we are building cloud, different type of clouds, to consume the services, right? And the beauty of it is, these cloud OS can go any country. So if you go Singapore or Japan or China, you can consume the same service, because Google or HAD data center is connected all over the world, right? So you will never lost a phone number, you will never lost anything. It's in the cloud, right? Make sense? So I said all things is software, but somebody has to manage it, right? Have you heard about AI, artificial intelligence? That's the hottest term in US now. If you say AI, if you say machine learning, you get job without giving interview. Right? So I'm just joking, but that's the trend. Why it's so important? Why AI is so important? Because when you do automation, when you create a lot of software like this, Somebody has to understand, so a human cannot understand how complex the network is beyond our imagination, right? So somebody has to understand and, and fix those up, right? Right now, we measure, we, we do it by hand, but in future, your network will optimize itself. So it will learn how to do routing, it will learn how to do switching, and then it will self-optimize. So you always have the best network, by the way. So this thing is done, they call management and orchestration. So this is the AI. Google is working with this, Amazon, at and everybody is working because their network is like now, because they created the software for each, like I showed, right? But that software don't talk with each other. And human can trace it. So they're building AI so that they learn and right? organize it dynamically. So let me give you an example, real world. So if you are going to a football match, you see you cannot download something that you could download anywhere else. Why you cannot do it? Because of the traffic. There are so many people, they are going to the same base station, trying to do download something, right? So that means there is a congestion, right? So how to relieve it? Now there is no way. Either you build something that you don't need, only for the game you need it. So nobody builds extra base station for that. So you suffer. In software defined world, when there is a game, you can change the software and tell, add more base station. Because it's only the servers and routers, right? The software is base station. So if the server and routers are very cheap, so if you have enough routers and servers, it will create base station when there is a game, it will delete it when there is not a game, right? That's how the network will be optimized in future. So that, that's, the, that's the way we are going. Right? And that's why automation AI is so important. Right? Any questions? The last thing I want to share, um, the process. Anybody heard of waterfall process? So this is where you actually develop software. You do something, you send it to text. Right? You do something else and send it to text. So it's called waterfall, right? So this way, usually the software is to be made, right? Very slow. Always do test, test, and go back. But now, with the new world, right? With 2020 network, you do development and operation and testing in the same time, right? So it's much, 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 much efficient, right? Then same thing. You used to have a service, but now they're calling microservice. What microservice means? Microservice means that a, a phone do a lot of services, right? But if you can share a phone service with something else, phone can do other things too, right? Let me give, give you an example. They are saying that the satellite they sent in, in 1970 in the sky or in the moon has less power than the mobile phone we have right now. That means if you can share your mobile phone, it can even run a satellite and take it to Mars. Right? That has that much memory. But what we are doing now, we, we are just taking selfies and uploading Facebook, right? But it has so much power. So if you can utilize that in different other things, right? If you can connect to a desktop or if you can program a robot with your phone, you can do that because it has that memory. Right? So those are they are calling microservices, utilizing the same thing in different purposes. 
and break down into smaller and smaller cells. So that's where they, they are designed. Last thing, I don't know if you have our virtual server, anybody? Virtualization? No. So these are actually, you will hear when you join any company, you have a server right now or a laptop, think about that. What you can install? Microsoft, Windows. But if you want Linux, you have to partition it, this and that. But there is a way you can add virtualization layer, right? And that virtualization layer will create 10 different laptops inside your laptop, virtually. So you can log into a Linux, you can log into a Windows, right? Because that application virtualize your hardware. You can get the concept, right? Before your software is talking to your RAM, your hard disk, your memory, so legend, nobody can talk. Now I provided a software who, who shared everything, who says, okay, for Linux, I shared some of the RAM, for Windows, I shared some, and then you can log in and switch Windows. So that means same resource, you can utilize more and more. So that's the concept is coming, and Google and Facebook is actually utilizing that in their data center. So same resource you can utilize in 100 different ways, right? Because software created a different layer, and that resource utilization will become much, much more important. And then that will come to container. I'm not going to details about it, but that's the trend that virtual machines and container you'll hear inside your laptop. You can have any app, you know, inside your laptop. Linux, Windows, whatever you want. And lastly, we used to have data centers for telcos. Now we are going to cloud. Everything will be connected to cloud. So I think you guys now have little idea what IoT means, how it will change the life, right? What cloud means, right? How it is affecting us. What software defined networking means, right? How it is changing, right? And the last thing is, what is 5G? Like why 5G is important? So, I think that's about it. I try to say everything non-technical, very non-technical, since you guys are students. But if you have any questions, I'm happy and I can answer. If you have any questions, anything not related, that's also. where they have the big machines, right? You hear about supercomputers. Supercomputer is nothing but what you say. You have computers all connected. And every computer has a limitation. So if you distribute the task in all the computers and then get the result, that's actually supercomputer do. Same way you can do that. So if you are connected to two, two phones, two networks, you can distribute the process. Okay, do something, do something, and show me the result. I like to hear and that's doable and that's getting done. Very good idea. Well, so thank you so much for your presentation. So sir, I'm very much uh, interested in that. You said that we don't need a Wi-Fi device or Wi-Fi chip. We can do it with, with our laptop. Sir, so, um, can you please? Uh, Wi-Fi chip, uh, I didn't get it. Sir, you say, oh, sorry, live router, sir. We, need, we just need an antenna and using that Laptop and antenna, we can do it. Right. So, tell me what a router do, right? Wi-Fi router. So, Wi-Fi router has a modulator, right? And Wi-Fi router has a processor, right? And Wi-Fi router has an app built inside uh, in the processor with the C code, right? Right? It has a, like a, a OS for that app. And then it has antenna to transmit and receive, right? But whatever you do with the processor, whatever you do with the app, your laptop can do that. Because it's a processor in processor. Your app is app. But problem is Wi-Fi router guys 
only write the app for the Wi-Fi for the chip. It never write for your Intel uh, processor, right, basically. So you have to come up with the app or you have to find the app to do that job, right? And then you have to connect your antenna that, you know, you can send and transmit the data, right? Through the LAN port or anywhere. I'm just giving an example, it's not available right now. But that's the concept we are selling everything to Delta now. That we are, we are not sending any purpose-built hardware. Because whatever purpose-built thing you make, your processor can do that. Just we never utilize that. We never thought that way. That unified processor can be utilized for any Wi-Fi. Right? So that concept is coming in. That's how the telco is changing. Right? Telco, why telco was so expensive? Because every box is purpose-built. Right, every router, every box from Ericsson, from Cisco, from Nokia, they built only for that purpose. It has so much R&D. And now they're saying, why don't you just make the software, utilize HP server, right? utilize Linux, everything open source. Right? So your cost will come down and down and down. And more and more people will use internet. And that's, if you go internet and search telecom infra project, TIP, from Facebook, and look how they are changing. So they are designing a server. They are designing wireless base antenna. They are designing Wi-Fi router and giving out to everybody. All the operators, they're giving free, right? So here we thought that, okay, Facebook is a very, very good company, giving everything, everything free. But why they're doing it? More people use Facebook, Facebook has more money, more ads, right? So nothing is free, right? That's the concept. Any other questions? Uh, yes. We have all, everyone is we are under the history and going to finish. And everyone, most of us are finalists. Yes, sir. Question is, sir, it's about the career. If you could tell us about the career, if you are aware of any other. So there are two types of career, right? One is here inside the country, another is outside. So, depends on your choice that you want to stay in this country or you want to go out. So, let me give you two, two examples. If you want to go out, right, that means, uh, as I said, don't limit yourself to only few universities or you know, few countries, right? All the top countries are almost the same, either it's Germany or it's Korea or US, all those, right? So, if you want to learn good things, right, you should go to those countries. And as I said, my concept of mobile communication here was writing codes and, and running some services, right? operation maintenance. But in, in foreign countries, that's a job for technicians. Because you are not innovating. All the engineers always should innovate. They should design. They should not do something that you can do again. Any redundant job should be done by diploma or not even something else. So that concept is gone. That means you guys should be always looking for something, even in this country, that's do design, that's do something new, right? And and you guys can start, even though you guys are electrical or what, you can work for any software related company, right? Like uh, like that helps uh, building laptop or anything, right? So think about something, that job, the satisfaction will be coming when you design something, when you do something new every day. That's my uh, experience. If you do the same thing, whatever job you have, you'll get end up getting bored. And more intelligent you are, more quickly you get bored. Right? So do something that you love, and you actually want to do it. Whatever here or in the foreign 